Good morning and welcome to beautiful Savior Lutheran Church. It's the fourth Sunday of Easter. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We begin our worship by singing our first hymn, hymn 693, O Holy Spirit, grant us grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Although Christ, our Good Shepherd, has risen and given us salvation and new life, we have not always lived as His sheep. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive, forgive our sins, sins and cleanse, and cleanse us, us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most, Most merciful God, God we, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. I lay, my down, my, I lay down my life for the sheep. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. 
Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. And I lay down my life for the sheep. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, because you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We continue now with our hymn of praise, hymn 389, Let All Together Praise Our God.
The first reading for today, the fourth Sunday of Easter, is taken from the books of, book of Acts, the second chapter, beginning at verse 42. St. Luke writes, And they devoted themselves to the apostles, teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. We continue now with the gradual. Christ Christ has has risen risen from from the the dead. dead. God God the the Father has has crowned crowned him with glory and honor. He has has given given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. The epistle reading comes to us today from Peter's first letter, the second chapter, beginning at verse 18. St. Peter writes, Servants, be subject to your masters with all respect, not only to the good and gentle, but also to to the unjust. For this is a gracious thing when mindful of God. One endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, Neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that he might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the Alleluia and verse. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory Glory to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Truly, truly, I say to you, He who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him. For they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We continue now with the confession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We will now sing the hymn of the day, hymn 709, 
The King of love, my shepherd is. Grace, mercy, and peace from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A Sunday school teacher encountered a particularly difficult class one year. She had students interrupting class, ignoring directions, and causing quite a few disruptions. And of course, the teacher stepped away from teaching Sunday school. What this person thought would be an enriching experience turned out to be a deflating and frustrating one. And this experience led to personal suffering for that teacher. More than likely, you have faced difficulties when you have attempted to serve your neighbor, even perhaps in the church. You may have dealt with unrealistic expectations, apathetic ingratitude, 
unapologetic criticism for your efforts. You may have even shouldered insults and hardships from self-centered individuals. No one likes to experience things like these. From our old Adam's perspective, when we suffer while serving others, it makes sense then, because of that suffering, to say, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm going to withdraw. I'm going to retreat. And I may even act in direct opposition to what God has called me to do. And that is to serve my neighbor, to love my neighbor through the various stations in life. When we suffer, we may believe that God is telling us to move on to something else, to move on from serving when it becomes difficult. When we suffer, we may even question that if that suffering comes from God as some sort of punishment or message, we may believe that God allows these things to happen because we have sinned in some way. The Apostle Peter wants us to change our thinking. Peter does not link our suffering, especially in service, as an expression of God punishing us. He points us to Jesus who suffered in our place. Acquainted with grief and with sorrow, Jesus faced rejection and persecution as he came to serve and bring God's salvation to all. Yet Peter reminds us this, Jesus committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. Of course, we know that the Father did not punish Jesus because our Lord had done anything wrong. Instead, he sent Jesus to suffer and to die for our sins, for your sins, for my sins, so that we might be forgiven and have a right standing before God. We need to remember that our shepherd Jesus suffered immensely. He suffered in ways that we cannot ever fully comprehend or know. The prophet Isaiah promised, or I'm sorry, prophesied that when Jesus suffered on the cross, some would conclude that the Father was punishing him for blaspheming. But Isaiah and Peter both testify that God sent Jesus as the suffering servant to accomplish his plans of salvation. Peter also writes in our epistle lesson for today, he himself, that is Jesus, bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin. And live to righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. As Isaiah declared, Jesus would bear our griefs and carry our sorrows. He was the one who was pierced for our transgressions and crushed for our iniquities. The one on whom the Lord laid the iniquity of us all. In Christ, God breaks into human history to take the stain of sin and sting of death upon himself. It wasn't easy. It wasn't pleasant. But he did it out of love for us. Many times our sins result in negative consequences. Those things that, and bad choices that we make result in suffering. For example, if we cheat on a spouse, it may result in divorce broken relationship, lack of trust, these kind of things. Yes, our sins can result in negative consequences, and they do separate us from God. They do merit present and eternal punishment as we confessed this morning and then received the absolution through Jesus Christ our Lord. Because Jesus did, came, did come to take the punishment and guilt for all of your sins. And if Jesus has taken all the guilt and punishment for your sins, then suffering, especially as we serve, cannot be intended as punishment from God. So why then do we suffer, even as we serve? Well, we live in a sinful, fallen, broken world, one that is hostile to the gospel 
and to God's ways. We live in a world of sinners who think of themselves first, and we will encounter and serve fallen, sinful, broken people. People who have endured their own hardships, faced their own demons, and yes, can even hurt and harm their neighbor through sinful actions. And themselves have more than likely and have been hurt and harmed by others. Yet, Peter calls us, and even more importantly, Jesus calls us and empowers us to endure difficulties, put the need of neighbor first, serve those who may insult us, hurt us, and make life difficult for us. The Apostle Peter encourages Christians facing difficulties, trials, and sufferings in their vocations to not act contrary to those vocations. In other words, not to run away when the going gets tough. Not to abandon our vocations, but rather to follow the example of Jesus as a testament to the love of God in Christ Jesus. And so Peter begins this section writing, Servants, be subject to your masters with all respect, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the unjust. For this is a gracious thing. When mindful of God, one endures sorrow while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if, when you sin and are beaten for it, endure? In other words, if you've done wrong, well, yeah, then you deserve punishment. But if, when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. Our old Adam will protest and say, well, I don't deserve to suffer while I'm serving. And those who make me suffer don't deserve my service. But consider our own actions against God. We, like sheep, have all gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. We have been hostile to God and his love for us, outright rebellious. We have treated God with contempt. We have ignored his loving kindness and perfect ways and will for our lives. Yet God does not want us to suffer, especially eternally, for these transgressions. His love is so great for you that the Father sent Jesus to suffer and die for sinners. With this in mind, with this assurance of the gospel, Peter encourages us, for to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. Now, of course, we're not going to serve others as perfectly as Jesus did, but that doesn't mean that we abandon this call. Peter tells us that we are to bear witness to Christ's own suffering and death and resurrection through our thoughts, words, and actions. Bearing witness to Christ caused our Lord to experience suffering from a hostile word. Bearing witness to himself caused Christ to experience suffering from a hostile world. And it won't be any different for us. It's good for us to know and essential for us to know that suffering is not a good work by which we are saved. But we endure sufferings in our vocation and serve our neighbor so that our neighbor may see the goodness of God, so that our neighbor may be served. In case you haven't noticed, your sinful, fallen, broken neighbor needs the gospel, needs your good works, needs your love, and needs your service. Many times, yes, they will reject that service. They will criticize that service. They will fair, fail to appreciate that service. But they still need it. They need your witness. They need the gospel. They need to know about Jesus and his perfect service and love for them. This is a gracious thing. When mindful of God and all that he endured for us in the person of Jesus Christ, that we endure sorrows while suffering unjustly. 
Though suffering as a Christian, we will not and cannot bring about salvation for us or for anyone else. We bear witness to the one who can, the shepherd and overseer of our souls. The Lord Jesus Christ, who suffered the, fa the Father's wrath and rejection on the cross and rose victorious so that we would never have to suffer rejection and wrath from the Father. Remember our suffering shepherd, for he did and suffered for you out of love for you so that you might be saved. Amen. Now may the peace which transcends all understanding guard your hearts and minds in faith. Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. At this time, we will continue singing the first verse of our offertory, Gracious God, you send great blessings. Let us pray for the people of God's pasture and the sheep of his hand and all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, in the wake of your son's resurrection, your people devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Unite your people in the one true faith and grant penitent hearts so that all may know your love and mercy in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. King of the nations, with your favor, grant wisdom and discernment to the President and Congress of the United States and all others in authority. Replenish them with your grace, that they may always rejoice in your will and walk in your way. Prosper all good counsels and just works that compassion and life contentment and peace, truth and righteousness, genuine faith and piety may be established among us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our Creator and Redeemer, the culmination of all beauty is found in your Son. Bless all artists and artisans, that in the midst of a world made ugly by sin, their labors might remind us of the beauty with which you have endowed our creation and our redemption. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, by the work of the Holy Spirit through the means of grace, you daily add to the number of believers being saved. Grant to your people open ears, courageous hearts, and bold tongues to receive and proclaim your truth. Help us not to neglect your gifts, but trust that you will strengthen us and gather more in keeping with your gracious will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, receive our humble and unending thanks that Christ suffered for us so that we might die to sin and live in righteousness. When it is given to us to suffer for your name's sake, grant that we might follow in the steps of our Savior and act in love and entrust ourselves to you. Strengthen those who endure persecution for the name of Jesus. Thwart the plans of those who oppose the gospel and grant to them repentance so that they too might die and live in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, you worked many miracles through the hands of the apostles in the name of Jesus. Hear our prayer on behalf of all who cry to you. We pray for those we name in the silence of our hearts and those requesting prayers, including Lynn Strage, Craig and Susan Kepi, 
Pat Romsdahl, Don McCabe, Lynn Ring, Monterey Morse, Greg Ide, Teresa Driscoll, Heather Mum, Betty Gerald, Jean Enright, Stacy Lorath, Claudia Schrader, Tracy Tripke, also Randy and Shelley, Ray, Mary, and Carmi, Becky and Dennis, Emily and other missionaries from Wisconsin, Ken Kaler, Marilyn and Judy, Lisa, Annie, and Harold, Victoria, Shirley, and Irene, Pastor Al Eppin, Deanna and Grant German, Reiko and Renee and Carter, Julie and Peg, Chelsea and Oliver, Maverick, Darlene, and Tom, Dennis, Denise, and Pam, Lloyd and Skip, Renee, Sloan, and Pam, Randy, Michelle, Braden, Cameron, and Amy. Provide them help according to your will and within our vocations. Grant that we might help those in need with glad and generous hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you would not have us grieve as those who have no hope, but rather you call us to live in the confidence that all who die in faith are with you in everlasting life and eternal peace. By your word and spirit, strengthen this bereaved Mother's Day, those women in the knowledge that their loved one is at home with you in your heavenly kingdom. Give them the courage to walk by faith until that day when all who belong to you will be reunited around the throne of the Lamb. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you still gather your sheep, and we still hear your voice through your holy word. Receive our thanks for all the saints whom you have shepherded through the valley of the shadow of death to eternal life. Grant that we may always follow the voice of our good shepherd until we are gathered with them before your throne. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, bless your word wherever it is proclaimed. Make it a word of power and peace to convert those not yet your own, and to confirm those who have come to saving faith. May your word pass from our ears to our hearts, from our hearts to our lips, and from our lips to our lives, that your word may achieve the purpose for which you send it. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. We conclude our service by singing our closing hymn, I Am Jesus, Little Lamb, Hymn 740.
Just a couple of announcements for you this week. Uh, Bible class, uh, right away after this service at 9.30 in the morning. Uh, please make sure that you're using the new link for that uh, that's on our church website. I believe an email came uh, in the mail on Saturday as well for that. Uh, additionally, uh, tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock, there's a special voters meeting on Zoom. Uh, a link has been sent out about that as well uh, for all you to attend with that as we have a very special voters meeting tomorrow night. Uh, additionally, on our church website are the confirmation essays. Uh, did not get to hear them here in the sanctuary, uh, but you have an opportunity to hear those uh, record, that are recorded on our church website. Uh, so we'd invite you to take a look at that. It's under the worship tab on the home page uh, towards the bottom. Uh, there's a listing there for confirmation essays. Have a great day and a great week in the Lord. And Lord willing, we'll see you next week.